So please support her. Dr. Riley, tell us the title of your book. I don't the title of the book is called The Five Buckets of Leadership Speaking in the Moment. It's the first book in the Five Buckets of Leadership series. So the first one is learning how to be a speaker in the moment. I use a technique. I'm, a, I'm into brain science. And so I use the technique that hijacks your brain in the midst of stressful situations. Mm -hmm. So if you are in a stressful situation and you needed to provide succinct answers, succinct thought, and know how to be a speaker that sounds like you know what you're talking about, then the book is for you. And I teach you how to hijack your brain and reroute your neurotransmitters. Yes. Yes. You better go. That's Dr. Mm -hmm. Anissa Riley here. That okay. book is well needed, especially for me. Thank you so much. Okay. So thank you, Dr. Riley. I wanted to just shout you out and how proud I am to support you. You see April wearing it. Um, First Lady has it on too. You, we got to promote the team. Uh, talk with Grit last night, baby. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My, my initial vision was you know, we always look at, let me speak for myself. I know sometimes like we go to see people speak and we know them personally, or we just know other things behind what they're being celebrated for. Right. And, you know, I sit there and I'm, I'm like, well, you know what? I wonder how many people sit in our audience and look at us and say, yeah, they probably, you know, aren't doing, yeah, it sounds good, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, what better way would it be to honor the work that um, people are doing, but at the same time, bring the truth straight to the audience. Mm. Let the audience hear from the mouths of our babes, right? Yep. How being who we are affects who they become. So that was really my vision. Dr. Isn't that Young, the point? Isn't that the point, April? Being who it's we the are. Point. That's the it's point. The point. It affects but I who want they like I want the audience become. know like we not, you know, we are we, we're not we're not the fake version. Like no. yep. we, unapologetically we, you, know, you. We we are who we are and we're really doing the work. Yes. And it just was it was just all my heart. It's like, you know what? I need the audience to hear from the mouth of their babes. So mm -hmm. they can be like, you know what? They are really about the work. The work, the work that many people in our industry haven't really experienced yet yeah. because mm. they're so busy being compliant. They have not learned how to be committed. Mm. To mm. Right. It's the battle of the seas. Okay. Yes. 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 So yeah, that's going like to be that. actually one of my books, um, compliance versus commitment coming out. So I said it, so now I have to do it. Um, you said you spoke it into the atmosphere. Right. So okay, now you are it. accountable. Come on up, Dr. Ja. Y'all know Dr. Ja. He is uh, a part of OSG, uh, youngest uh, PhD in the country, straight out of Philly. So thank y'all so much, of course, for having me. I always just listen to the words of wisdom that y'all have. But yeah, I have an actual new project. Um, we worked on a documentary for the past three years, and it's basically on uh, my journey through education at a very young age and where my HBCU education was allowing me to get invited to the University of Oxford. And we documented the whole process to inspire uh, kids in the inner city as well as other environments to actually show what it's like to navigate the STEM arena as a young black male. So the beautiful thing is, especially uh, with OSG, is that we are going to bring the screening to New York. So coming to New York City, I'm finally going Let's to go. see my OSG family, and it's going to premiere um, June 27th. What made you have the the foresight to, to document your story? It wasn't my idea, actually. It was one of my mentees' ideas. So one of my mentees is a, a filmmaker, but before he was mm -hmm. a photographer, and he said, I always want to tell stories, and I heard you had a great story, and I want to tell it. And so when I got invited to speak at the University of Oxford, that's when we sat down. It's OK, it's time to tell the story. But it's because of him. I have an actual film um, on my journey, which I always credit him and also his co-producer, because I'm all about just mentoring um, students. They the reason why they taught me how to do treatments and document the journey and actually see how everything come about. And also inspired by Dame Dash himself, just understanding what it takes to document the journey, always having things documented. Because when you look back, you can see 
how you're making an impact, um, not just in the lives of others, but for yourself as you're growing towards becoming the person you need to become. I'm a mother of a son, right? So, and, and when we look in the media, how our men are portrayed, how our men are viewed, it's not the brightest it's not always um you know under a great spotlight so this event is catered to trying to change the narrative of our black men or our men of color so um like i said this is an annual event and this year we're actually one of our honorees is actually mr mckenzie so so the easy breezy dennis mckenzie is being honored at the hustle yes. awards well he yes. he's a perfect honoree he is he is so um I don't, I didn't, I haven't gotten speak to, gotten to speak to him personally, but I read his bio and he's definitely a definition of a hustler. You guys know, more, you guys know that more than I do. Um, so every year we look for different um, men in the community that we spotlight and we honored and the, and the age range varies, right? So as, as long as you're a man of color and you're doing positive things and you're a change agent for the next generation or in your, in your um, respected fields, those are the men, those are the men that the men that we're looking for. Because again, if you think about it, women, we have Women History Month, we have Mother's Day, we will get dressed up, dolled up, and have an empowerment brunch just because, right? Yes. But you can't, the men don't really do that. They don't We really, are not mad at you honoring the, the men of color. And right. I, I say all of the men of OSG could be hustle award winners. I I'm seeing that. I'm seeing that just like yes. the person who just spoke before me, he would be a perfect recipient. So those mm -hmm. are the men that we're we're we're, we're spotlighting. So I'm the principal in um Park Slope, Brooklyn right now, John Jay School for Law, um, Brooklyn North, down um, District 15. And one of the classes I've been teaching is financial literacy. And one of my students, not one of my students, many of my students have asked this one question: How come there's not enough of us? of our faces, black and brown people, when it comes to finances, especially cryptocurrency. And um, I was like, that's a good question. Because even all my friends that I have who are in that space, are none of them are black or brown. <laughs> They're all white folk. And it's, and it's interesting. I was like, that's a good question. Because I guess it became a, bl a, blind, spot of, a blind spot of mine. Because when we think, think about money, we often think about, you know, the, the, the dominant culture around money. And um, as a result, and a lot of deep conversations about cryptocurrency with my students, which are um, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, I was like, you know what? I, I want to do something more. I want to do something more. And because there isn't a curriculum in, 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 in New York City or in, in most spaces in, in, in America around financial literacy, um, and especially cryptocurrency, um, we're getting left out. Of, of, of a new economy that's developing. We need to ignore Bitcoin was at 35 yesterday and all of that. The reality is it is slowly moving up and will be the dominant currency. You know, it's going to happen. Um, and because we're not part of the conversation, we're going to get left out. Like we got left out when the internet, when the internet boom happened and when all the booms have happened. So I reached out to those friends of mine in the crypto space and said, what can, how can I bring you guys into this a space where I can, share this knowledge that I'm still having a hard, hard time articulating. Um, but coming from your mouth, for those of you who are in the NFT space, in the blockchain space, and a company, uh, company called Eureka said, hey, we'll do it. You know, let us know where and when and where. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to create a website. I'm going to put information out there. And whoever wants to come, um, hopefully as many young people as possible. But if, you, if you're an adult or whoever you want to come and learn, come and learn. And um Saturday, one o'clock from, from um, one to four, we're going to be having our first event. I'm hoping to do this every month, bringing someone from the crypto project space into our space to talk to us about cryptocurrency. By the time I was um, 22, I was on the road to bankruptcy. No one taught me anything about finance. My family, were, they're immigrants who came here from, from Nigeria and um, they were in survival mode. So no one taught them about the economic system here. So financial failure was, was, became part of our DNA, our American DNA. And, and I didn't fix my credit and, and get to a point where I actually understood what, how it worked until I was in my late thirties. So I was already a principal. I was already a school leader making a six figure salary. Mm -hmm. And I had the shame of the secret of saying, of that secret of that, of having bad credit. And a lot of people out there in that same boat, and, I, and I've met them, people who emailed, who DM'd me and said, listen, I'm a doctor <laughs> and, like, I, I, and my money situation is, is all crazy. And that's the one thing that we're not doing for our kids. You know, think about how many times people, adults have said, I wish they taught me that in school. 
Now we're educating. Why, why are we doing this in our schools for our kids? We're talking about racial justice and all these different things. Yes. But don't forget that Dr. King, as soon as he started talking about, you know, about money, getting people around economic empowerment, he was assassinated. That's the one thing that we're not doing in our schools. If we teach our kids how to fish, mm-hmm. guess what? What are we doing for them for, into their future? But instead, we're just focused on the core curriculum and the ABC is the one, two, three. We push them to the world and then they fail economically. That's why we have people out there who have college degrees and are, are literally broke. How is that possible? How is that possible? So we need to re- 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 revisit what we're teaching in our schools. And for me, I'm going to be a disruptor in my schools. Any school I'm at, financial literacy is going to be part of the, part of the curriculum. And the other thing, too, the kids are asking for it. My students are saying, Mr., I was hoping this was going to happen before I graduated. 